Welcome back for part two. cleaned up the block and the cylinder head which I'll show you in just a second I felt it not necessary to show you that just uh, use a razor blade some brake clean take your time on this make it nice and clean it's really clean looking down there isn't it make it nice and clean get all the residue of the old gasket off it's very important if you've ever done any body work you'll know that 90% of the work is all in the prep phase same thing right here Hey, real quick, I just want to mention to blow some compressed air down the holes here before your final cleaning where these cylinder head bolts go. Just in case you need debris uh, down here while you were cleaning the block, the surface of the block, uh, or any coolant that might be down there from, uh, you know, taking the head off. You know, fluid is incompressible, so you got any fluid down there and you torque these bolts down, you're either going to crack the block or not get all the torque on the bolts. So clean those holes out. And you'll see also I did the same thing on the bottom of the cylinder head where it mates here. It's nice and clean. Again, some brake cleaner, some razor blades, and then uh, just like a, a lint-free cloth just to uh, clean it all up. And the head gasket I'm putting on is a Ford OEM part. Here is the part number. All right, let's go ahead and set the head gasket on. All right, now we'll set the actual cylinder head. All right, cylinder head's on. Now let's drop uh, some brand new cylinder head bolts in there. Here they are. Uh, I will link the ones that I purchased in the condition description below. All right, let's drop these in. Okay, the service manual says to do something crazy. I can't... Let's see if I can remember these numbers. First pass is 62 inch pounds, which equates to like, do some math, here, like four or five foot pounds. 133 inch pounds, which is like, like 11 or 12 foot pounds, somewhere around there. And then 41 foot pounds, plus 90 degrees, plus 90 degrees. Obviously, uh, an engineer decided those numbers, so basically tell me you've never picked up a wrench without telling me you've never picked up a wrench. We're going to zip these. All right, they're all in, all torqued down. Uh, the way you do this is you start in the middle and work your way out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Some kind of X pattern like that. Start in the middle, work your way out. I did uh, 25 foot pounds, 41 foot pounds, and 90 degrees, and then 90 degrees, so a total of four passes. Assembly is essentially the reverse of removal, but I'll film it. I'm gonna put this gasket on. I'm gonna put these uh, four bolts in here, of course, without the uh, nut on the end of it here. I'll just put the E socket on here and uh, get that uh, manifold onto the back of the cylinder head. All right, the exhaust manifold is bolted back up, heat shield is on. I'm not going to lie, getting that heat shield on is a real pain. You know, maybe I should have taken those lines off behind it. It would have been easier, but what's done is done. I basically had to, uh, you know, straighten it a little bit to pull it out. And once I put it back in, I just kind of had to bend it back down underneath. Anyway, that is on. Let's go ahead and set all of the buckets uh, and cams in here right now. Okay, buckets and cams and caps are set these buckets down here um don't force those in very tight tolerances on that and remember to put them back in the exact same spot that they came out of same thing with these cam caps make sure that they go in the correct orientation and back on the same spot that they came out of all right and set your cams so you can uh basically the least amount of resistance is possible it's kind of inevitable you're going to have some lobes that are going to want to push down on some springs and I've also set these as close to where they're going to need to be uh, for their timing set position as well you can see here in the back I've got the lines you know it's not perfect but uh, they're close okay and what I want to do is walk this thing in I'm going to you know kind of go back and forth between these caps and slowly walk this one in intake and then same thing with the exhaust 
Okay, all the cam caps are cinched down, and I've got the timing tool on. Out of your kit that you will have, it'll be this uh, centerpiece in here. Um, basically, you need to use a wrench right here and right here, and roll the cams just ever so slightly until those lines are flat. So I believe this one had to roll this way, and this one had to roll, the exhaust had to roll this way. And then uh, I slid this in, and just put a bolt in here. I think it's an M6. Anyway, that is now locked, and the crankshaft is locked, and this is a good opportunity for me to show you what it looks like down there. You remember we put in this uh, black locking tool right here? What that looks like with the timing cover removed is you can see it come through and touch the weight, the counterbalance of the crankshaft right there. That basically just stops it and tells you that you're at top dead center. You don't want to use this to hold it while you uh, do these timing components. That's what the uh, starter removal and flywheel lock was for. All right, but this it tells you where you need to be, and you can verify that by looking here. You can see that that connecting rod is basically at the noon position, just straight up and down right through this hole right here. Okay, let's get the uh, let's get the timing components on the, the chain and the guides. All right, as you can see, I've got the chain uh, mocked up on here. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I got the VVT actuators on there, a couple 8 millimeter bolts that uh, go into that front cam cap that is also on there. The way you're supposed to do this timing is have these bolts loose and set this all up on here, pull the pin on the tensioner, and then torque these down, then get the timing cover on, and then torque the crankshaft pulley on. Because these didn't fail and I didn't have to take them off, I'm just leaving them in their position. And, and by putting the cams in their locked position, uh, the chain just draped right over these things and is in its perfect position. So I'm not going to loosen these and torque them. Uh, if you want to see that procedure, again, I've linked it much earlier and it's down in the description below. Uh, look at the Discovery Sport video and I, I talk about doing this uh, timing setup um, from a fresh engine perspective. Anyway... You got the static guide on here, got the tensioner arm here, there's a dowel pin that it just rides on, and then the next thing we'll do is uh, put the tensioner on and uh, pull its pin after I reset it, which I'll show you. Let me show you the, uh, the crankshaft uh, timing sprocket here. Remember that these things are held on by friction. These are not keyed. The camshaft sprockets are not keyed, and this crankshaft sprocket is not keyed. I can grab this sprocket here and move it around see that so basically i'm just making it uh, taut on the static guide side and then we'll just be pushing this tensioner arm forward and putting the tensioner in right here all right this thing is fully extended because when we took it off it just went in a full extend mode so there is a clip here see these two metal ears we're going to spread those ears out and then compress this thing till it's flat. Once it's flat, I've got a pin here. I'll put this pin in this hole right here, and then that'll lock it. Then we'll put it on and pull the pin. All right, the tensioner is in, and I've pulled the pin. I've got tension on this chain. This concludes the timing of this engine, at least 90% of it. The final step will be cranking the torquing the bolt on the crankshaft pulley here once the timing cover is on. So the timing cover is next. I've cleaned up the surface here on the actual engine. I will do the same on the timing cover, put a bead of uh, sealant on there, and uh, we'll put this thing on. Hey, real quick before we do that, I am going to put a dab of sealant here where these surfaces uh, mate, also up where the uh, cylinder head meets the block, uh, just for good measure. Here's the timing cover all cleaned up and it's already got the uh, the bead of sealant all the way around the outside. Make sure you put a, a dab here for that uh, star bolt that we'll put in there. Another dab there. And then three dabs around the large bolts up here. Let's put this thing in. And there we go, the timing cover is on. I did a lot of stuff actually uh, while I was doing this and I'll explain what, uh, what all I did. Let's look at the bottom as well. There it is on there. With the torque sequence, 
it really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. Just start somewhere in the middle. Start with uh, that bolt right there, uh, then this uh, starred bolt, and then just went uh, out to the middle and worked my way down and did from the middle down. Then I went up top and did from the middle up. Okay, let's go back up there. All right, I think these uh, eight millimeter guys are like 80 inch pounds, 81 inch pounds, something like that. Uh, doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot with these, just uh, nice and snug. Uh, these bolts, the 13 millimeter big guys, are 35 foot pounds. Make sure you torque those at 35 foot pounds. Uh, those are really important because basically uh, they support your, your motor here. We're about ready to put the motor mount on. While I was down here, I put the water pump pulley back on and the idler pulley uh, right underneath here. Put that back on as well. Uh, the changeover valve is back on. Uh, that goes on those uh, studded bolts over here. So at this point, let's uh, let's put the motor mount back on. Okay, the motor mount's on. Remember, you got a 15 millimeter bolt down there, another one on that side, uh, right down there, and then three 18 millimeter nuts. You might have to move the engine up and down with your jack and a block of wood underneath the oil pan. Don't forget to put the block of wood. Don't crack your oil pan. Move it up and down a little bit to kind of finagle this thing in there, but it'll go. All right, let's go underneath now and finish up the timing of this engine by putting on the crankshaft pulley. Obviously, this is where the crankshaft pulley goes. This is a uh, threaded boss here uh, that is very important for timing this. Remember, this is not keyed, just like the camshafts are not keyed. I'll be able to put this crank, on, crank pulley on here and uh, spin it uh, as much as I want. So looking down here at the crank pulley, you will see a hole drilled in the crank pulley right there. That needs to line up uh, to this boss here, and we'll just put a, a bolt in here. All right. In the kit, there's this piece, and this is um, we won't be using this or or the uh, hold down screw for it. Uh, this is for the older version of the pulley. Um, I believe uh, some older versions of the Ford. Uh, 2.0 EcoBoost used this, and uh, I for sure know that uh, Land Rover and Jaguar uh, use this. So it, this is kind of a little bit more than you need in this kit, but again, I, I still recommend this one. I like this one a lot. And again, the link to this is in the description below. Okay, I'm going to uh, set this pulley on. All right, it's on. You can see the uh, bolt we put right here. And this is 74 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees. Now that that is torqued on there, we'll remove this bolt. The locating bolt is removed. You can look right in there. You can see right down to the threaded boss. That's perfect. Now let's go ahead and remove this crank position lock here. All right, that crank position lock uh, tool has been removed, and I've put the plug back in right there. I should mention at this time, uh, probably should have mentioned this a little bit earlier, but do not torque this unless your uh, flywheel lock is still on the starter. Remember, we have not removed that yet. That is what is really holding this for you. If you don't, you could snap this uh, locating bolt right off. That would be bad. All right, last part of the timing here is to get this uh, crankshaft position sensor uh, in place. This is why this locating bolt here is so important. It's because there's a tone ring around this guy, and it's got to be right in the right position. Okay, so let's uh, let's get the alignment tool on this, and I'll show you what that looks like. The last tool in the kit that we are using is uh, this guy, this real nice shiny chrome-looking guy. It's uh, plastic. You just fit it over the sensor. You'll notice that it uh, spreads over a tooth. Let me pull it off here. It spreads over a tooth with this slot in the in the pulley, just like so. And once it locates for you, then you just uh, cinch these bolts down, and then it's in the right spot. See, this the sensor, if these bolts were loose, you can move the sensor back and forth. So this locates it perfectly for you uh, right there. Okay, let's get, uh, let's get the belts on. Okay, I'll call it the main belt is on. This is the tensioner, of course, two 10 millimeter bolts back onto uh, the cylinder head uh, and down onto the block. Goes around the water pump right there and then idler pulley and then down to the down to the crankshaft down here and around the alternator you can kind of see how it goes around there you know in order to get this stretch bolt back on i'm going to need to be able to turn this crank so let's take the rest of the uh 
timing tools off now. Real simple up top here, just pull this bolt out and slide the cam lock out. Boom, that is off. All right, let's get the flywheel lock that goes where the starter goes out and we'll just put the starter back in at this time. Okay, the starter's back in. There is somewhat of an order of operations to get this in. Remember, set the starter, put your two 13 millimeter bolts in, then put the auxiliary water pump on. It's really hard to see down in here. Uh, right there, that nut is holding por a portion of the bracket. The other portion of the bracket goes on to the bottom stud. There's a stud there, there's a stud on the bottom. Then put on your um, little bracket here, this thin bracket. Then put the 10 millimeter nuts on. And then of course, push your uh, wiring harnesses back into where they go. And then there's a clip down here, don't forget that. Okay, now that that is done, we can get this stretch belt on. So the way I'm going to do this, just put it on the air conditioning first, put this over here, and I'm going to hold it on, and then I'm going to crank the engine over, and the belt will follow the crankshaft pulley up and on. There we go, just like that. Basically, I just held on to the belt here, turn the engine over clockwise, all right? Do not go this way, go clockwise. Holding the belt on here, and then it'll just uh, eventually stretch and slip itself on. They make a tool for this, you don't need to buy that. It goes right on this way. This step is not required, but if you want to check your work, now's the time to do it. If you turn this crankshaft pulley over two times, line it back up, put your uh, locating screw back in here, then you can go up top, and your camshaft alignment tool should be able to fit right back into those slots. Nice and easy. See if I can show it. Just like that. Again, not required, but it'll probably make you feel good. I'm gonna work on the fuel injectors and fuel rail next. I'm gonna go ahead and put mostly new seals on this thing. There's a kit here. Looks like it's a BG9Z9229 Alpha. That's the Ford part number, CM5215. Uh, I believe that's the supplier's part number, but whatever. Anyway, this is it. Uh, this is going to go on the new injectors. Uh, get some new O-rings, some new spacers, uh, and some new spring-loaded clips for this thing here. What I'm not going to replace, because I've had uh, bad luck in the past. These things are really hard. Right here on the end is these Teflon seals. Uh... I've had much better luck just reusing them as it is. This car's only got 60,000 miles. Just clean it up. Look, here's one that I've cleaned up. Okay. It looked like this before. Just some brake cleaning and a towel. Clean the carbon off. I'll probably put a light coating of uh, some kind of assembly lube on there when we go and put it in. I'm just going to show you one of these, uh, and then I'll do the same thing to all four, of course, before they go in. Let's get started. Okay, in the kit, the first thing you do is grab one of these guys. Um, you'll notice that it's got a, a flatter side here. When you turn it over, you see it's not so flat. This flat side needs to be facing up, okay? Because that's going to help you with the, with the O-ring. So you just get this guy on here. It's a little bit difficult. Just take your time. Work it around. Just like so, okay? Then you'll have a new O-ring in the kit. Just put the O-ring on, work it around. This one is all cleaned up, it's ready to go. I'll put a little bit of assembly lube here on this O-ring. Um, we gotta put the new clip on. Just like that. This is a spring-loaded guy that'll help keep tension on it to keep it pushed into the cylinder head. And again, I'm gonna put some uh, a little bit of assembly loop here, a little bit down here, uh, and push all of these, do this to all of these fuel injectors and push them into the rail, get them ready to go. Bada bing, bada boom. It's all done. Do notice that uh, there's some locating portions of this that you'll need to watch. So there's this uh, black tabs here. Make sure that they fit into the slot. This looks good. Let's put it on. 
fuel rail is in set it in there put your five volts in start in the middle and work your way out and it'll seat itself plugged it in got the pressure sensor plugged in got each injector plugged in i'm going to go ahead and put that uh, worthless uh, insulated cover over it I'm going to set the intake now. The way I'm going to do this is it goes in. The first thing I'm going to do is plug in the throttle body. Then I'll plug in the PCV. I'll put these wiring connectors. There's one right here. One right here. There's a PCV. Put those on. Then I will bolt it up against the intake. Then I'll get this uh, pipe on from underneath the car. There she is, nice and set in there, torqued down. And you got five bolts. One right there in the center. Yeah, you'll just follow them around. Five bolts. Uh, start in the center, work your way out uh, to torque those down. A lot of this is kind of uh, working it in by feel. Once you kind of get it set in there, you kind of just got to get your hand behind there, feel what you're doing, and uh, plug in the throttle body, get the PCV in, and get those little electrical connectors on there. Okay. I know I'm kind of bouncing around here, but I'm going to go ahead and put this splash shield back in, the wheel on, so I can lower the car back down. That way I don't have to lean over so far to get to the stuff as I put the top end of the engine back together. Wheel enter, going in. Man, what a royal pain in the ass this one is. So, you basically have to take this wheel arch trim off to get the wheel arch liner in. Because the liner, I don't know how I got this liner out with this trim still on. Um, but anyway, pull the wheel arch trim off and then put the wheel liner in and then put this trim back on. So uh, in the back here underneath, you've got a fir tree. You got a fir tree right here. There should be a fir tree here. Mine broke. This is a push pin, push pin, push pin push pin that's in the back then on the front oh i'm sorry let me go to the side here fir tree here fir tree fir tree there should be another fir tree here but that one broke as well then in the front you just got a bunch of seven millimeter bolts one two three four five six seven okay and then underneath to get this uh front guard on here you got a fir tree here you got a push pin here and then you got two bolts right there holy moly it's on all right wheels on this thing's been lowered back to the ground now i'll be able to reach things in the back of the engine much easier all right let's get moving and wrap this thing up last two cam caps here in the back we're going to need to put a little bit of uh, sealant on them because they are in fact the last uh, barrier for oil uh, and also the uh, adapter for the vacuum pump drive let's get that on Okay, those are on. Let's get the fuel pump housing on. Fuel pump housing is in. You got four studded bolts that you put in there. And then um, at this time, I decided to go ahead and put the uh, coolant line that bolts in back here. Because uh, that goes on one of the studded bolts and then you put a nut on there. And now is a good time. There's a cam follower. It's got a little key here towards the front. Should be able to feel how that goes. And push that in all right let's get the uh let's get the water outlet manifold down here this guy let's put that back on water outlet pipe here water outlet manifold is in three of the four bolts are in i'm leaving this one out and i'll show you why it basically is uh also holds the uh, fuel pressure rail uh in on that one as well so let's go ahead and put the fuel pump on the rest of the way here the housing's on i just leave the pump up here connected I'm going to bring that down and I'll put that on two 8 millimeter bolts. Okay, the fuel pump is on. Don't forget to walk this down. You don't want to hurt the O-ring. So just a few turns on this bolt, a few turns on the one in the back, and back and forth until this thing's walked all the way down. Then I put the uh, metal bracket on here. That's two 10 millimeter bolts. You can see one back here, and there'll be one back here. All right there. Okay. Now, you've noticed I've kind of draped these uh, electrical wires and stuff over here because now I've got a clear shot. I'm going to go ahead and put the valve cover on before I start draping all the stuff back over it. In preparation to this, you need a dab of sealant there 
dab of sealant there, there, and on the back side of this journal here. And then a couple dabs up here where the timing cover meets the cylinder head, one there and one back there. I'll link a uh, part number uh, to a new valve cover gasket down below. I'm going to go ahead and set the valve cover. Boom, valve cover is on. Do yourself a favor. Start all the bolts first before you torque any of these down. And also, uh, put a little bit of lubricant over these VVT actuators so this slides on nice and easily over here, okay? Torquing, you start with the uh, center ones, touching that one right there, and then this one right here. And then start in the middle and work your way out, okay? You've also noticed that I've put in the coil packs, spark plugs and coil packs. Those are in as well. Now I'm going to put the, uh, or take these electrical lines, kind of lay them over here just a little bit loosely. I'm going to put in the high pressure fuel line. So you can see that there's a method to this madness. There's the high pressure fuel line on. Goes over uh, this threaded stud here. And then like I said, this is why I left this bolt out on the water outlet manifold. We'll put the last bolt in here. It's connected down here to the fuel rail. 17 millimeter connections on those. Also, the reason I paused and put the valve cover on is because I remembered that it would be uh, difficult, if not impossible, to get the valve cover on with this line on because it, it just kind of goes underneath the valve cover here. So anyway, that is on. I will put the nut there and the last bolt on the water manifold. Okay, that nut is on. Last bolt on the water manifold is on. Now is also a good time to put your purge line and purge valve back in. It's got a bracket that goes underneath here that also bolts to the fuel pump housing and uh, clips in back here, right there. So all four studs on this fuel pump housing hold something, okay? Let's get the vacuum pump on. There's no real uh, trick to this. Just look at where this is keyed in here. Line up the fuel pump key to that and bolt it in. Boom, there it is. Vacuum pump is in. Now we're getting real close here, folks. I'm going to go ahead and wire up everything and get the vacuum lines, the EVAP purge lines all reconnected. That'll take me a minute, uh, and I'll get right back with you. Okay, I've done as much as I possibly can without getting the air intake on. So, starting over here. You know, the way that they design wiring har harnesses these days, it's really hard to mess this up. You just kind of lay things back how, uh, how they go. They only put uh, enough wire length, really, to fit what it needs to go to. So, these threaded studs here um, on the valve cover uh, place the harness on here. You can uh, run this wire over here to the uh, sensor for the turbo back here. Wire up your VVT actuators. There's a threaded stud for this coil pack. Just put that across there. Keep coming down here. This wire goes down to, uh, I guess it's a manifold air pressure sensor. Uh, then you can plug in your coil packs. Then after your coil packs are plugged in, don't forget to get your uh, cam position sensors, both for the intake uh, and the exhaust back here. Went ahead and put the insulation cover on the fuel pump and plugged it in. Put the crankcase ventilation tube here, plugged it in. Uh, these vacuum lines, this is uh, good to pay attention to here. So starting back here, and they, they go onto the threaded studs back here. Follow it around here. This is the one I want you to pay attention to. My finger is following it, and it goes to the vacuum pump here. Look at the way that this wraps around this uh, wiring harness and goes underneath there. Okay, that's pretty important. Keep moving on over here. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. You got your purge valve here that plugs in. You got your water stop valve uh, for the climate control. And I think that is just about it. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put the intake pipe in. And this, this is not going to be too much fun. Got to get uh, got to get it in and crank down on this first, and then take this hose and it's got a clamp and that goes on it as well. There's been a couple things on this car that's pain in the butt, and this is for sure one of them. Getting that clamp on on that hose is, is tough. It's almost like they put that on, then put the engine in. Anyway, it's on, and that seven millimeter hose clamp down there is cinched down. So I've started these bolts up here. Let me get these on. Let's continue on getting this air ducting on. All right, here's the rest of the air piping. First, 
I might have shown two silver bolts over here. That was wrong. Uh, the longer of these two studs, 12 millimeter, goes over here, then a bolt here, uh, and then a bolt here. So working this thing on, don't forget your breather pipe back here. Clip that in. Set this on, 7 millimeter. Clip your EVAP lines in here. It's a vacuum line here. Keep working your way down here. Set the air box in first, then put this hose in. Don't forget to clip your... I thought that this was a mass airflow sensor, but it's only two wires. Maybe it's an air temperature sensor. All right, and then fit your guy back in here. You'll. This is pretty intuitive. You'll just see how it fits in here. It's weird, but it's intuitive. Okay, that is all on. Clamps are down. Bolts are on. Let's get this air filter box in here and then move on to reconnecting the battery. Air filter and top of the box are on. Battery was reconnected on the negative terminal and a cover put on. That is a chintzy cover. Good luck with that. This is a uh, reservoir for the brake master cylinder. Fluid reservoir. You've probably noticed this throughout this video that I've kind of like just zip tied stuff out of the way. So cut the zip tie, set that back down. I don't think I mentioned this, but this uh, insulation sound cover, whatever it is, is back on. Remember, it just goes over these uh, ears here, and then there's one push pin, this, uh, this silver guy down here. Okay, let's get the cowling and wipers on. Cowling and wipers are on. Don't forget the uh, bottom piece of the cowling goes in first. There's two bolts over there, uh, two bolts over there. Then you can slide the uh, top part of the cowling on, clips in right underneath the windshield. And you got a bunch of these friction clips here along the front of that and just put your wipers on back where they go. You might have to adjust those wipers. They're, you know, spline, they aren't keyed. So once this thing's up and running, I'll uh, use the wipers and then uh, make sure they're in the right location. If they're not, I'll just loosen the bolts and move them as needed and then put the covers on. 5.7 quarts of oil and coolant. All right, it's time. 5.7 quarts of oil are in this thing. Fill the coolant. I'm going to leave the cap off. As you uh, run the engine, it's going to get warm. It's going to take some out of there. We're going to let this thing uh, warm up and then uh, self-bleed and top off the coolant. Then we will put the cap on. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I like doing this live. This is a true startup here. I have not tried to start this thing. And it's not going to be like some of the other videos you see or like a car would normally be and fire right up. There's no fuel pressure in this thing. It needs to build fuel pressure. It might crank a little while. Let's see what it does. Here's the keys. Let's go. There we go. Hey, remember what I said about the wipers? Yeah, those are going to need adjusted. Those things went crazy on me, but uh, I'll adjust that. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and let it warm up and bleed the coolant. And normally at the end of my videos, I like to do a driving video. It really adds no value, and this video is already long enough. That That's it. You heard it running. This thing's going to go on the road. 1,000, 2,000 miles, something like that. I'm gonna make sure everything's good. I'm gonna leave the belly pan off. I'm leaving the engine cover off. I do that for a little while just to make sure everything's good and I can easily take a look at things, right? No leaks and stuff like that. Uh, that is it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's uh, free to you. Give the video a like. If you got any questions, put a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer. Hey, I'm gonna put a couple of videos. They're probably over here right now. They might interest you. Part one's gonna be uh, one of those videos and maybe something else that you might be interested in. Thanks again. See you next time.